Hi everyone! In this video, we will cover how to add basic exercise components to your Open edX course using MOOCIT Studio. Basic exercises are interactive questions which allow learners to test their knowledge. They can be used for training or tests and also be used to calculate the learner's final grade. In MOOCIT Studio, we refer to these questions as common problem components. From your course in Studio, select to open the unit where you want to add your question. Select to add a new problem component. There are five common problem types, check boxes, drop down, multiple choice, numerical input, and text input. These are also available with a pre-made template, including hints and feedback. If you prefer, you can also create a problem from scratch by selecting blank common problem. We will start with checkboxes, which is a multiple choice type of question where the learner can select more than one answer. Select to edit your question. Here, we can see that there is already a template set up for us to modify. The first thing I will do is remove the introductory text. This is the piece of text that appears directly above the shaded question box. Next, I will change the question text, which appears in bold inside the question box, and the optional tip to let the learner know how to answer the question. Question responses are written in a list format with square brackets before each option. Brackets with an X represent a correct answer. Empty brackets represent an incorrect answer. Here, we can simply modify the text. If you want to add more possible responses, you can simply copy and paste or manually add the additional responses directly below. When you're done, select Save. The next question type is drop-down. A drop-down question is a droppable menu with two or more possible answers. The learner can only select one. Select to edit the problem component and modify the text in the same format as the previous question. Drop-down menu questions are configured using two square brackets with each possible answer on a separate line. There can only be one correct response, and this will be indicated using round brackets. Since my question is true or false, I will remove one of the incorrect options and replace the text with true and false. When you're done, select Save. The next problem type we will add is multiple choice. This is a typical multiple choice question with only one correct answer. Select to edit the template. Again, the text follows a similar format to the previous questions. The difference between multiple choice and checkbox questions is that multiple choice uses round brackets for each possible answer while checkboxes uses square brackets. The correct response will be indicated with an X between the brackets. To add additional responses, you can copy and paste or manually add each option on a new line. When you're done, select to save. The next question type is numerical input. This is a question where the learner inputs a specific numerical response. Select to edit and modify the text as we did with the previous questions. After the equal sign, enter the correct response. You can specify to accept a range of numbers as the correct response by using the plus minus and adding a number directly afterwards. In this case, it would mean that if a learner inputted 8.32, they would still be correct. For numerical input questions and response ranges, you can also use percentages. When you're done, select to save. The final common problem type is a text input question. This is a question where the learner inputs a text response such as a specific phrase or word. 
Select to edit, and here, modify the text like in the previous questions. After the equal sign, type the correct response. You may also add optional acceptable responses by typing OR equals followed by the appropriate text. You may add as many additional acceptable responses as you like. When you're done, select to save. We can now test out our questions in the LMS by selecting to publish and then selecting view live. For the numerical response, we can check that the number 8 works, as well as 8.1 and 8.32. Because we added plus or minus 0.32 into our acceptable answer, if we answer 8.33, the response will be considered incorrect. For the text response, we can also test our variations. Note that the answers are not case sensitive, so it doesn't matter if I use capital or lowercase letters. However, it is sensitive to characters. So, for example, if I forget to input the comma between Paris and Ile de France, my answer will be considered incorrect. This is something you will need to consider when configuring the possible responses for your text input questions. And that's how to add basic exercises to your OpenEdX course using MOOCIT Studio.